More on this topic, I spoke to Salim Ali, Blue and Gold Distinguished Professor of Energy and the Environment at the University of Delaware. Now, he's also a member of the United Nations International Resource Panel. And I began by asking him whether lab-grown diamonds really are more environmentally friendly, especially given the energy needed to produce them. The, the, the core issue here is that uh, lab-grown diamonds have far more flexibility in terms of selecting their energy source in comparison with mined diamonds, because you could conceivably situate a lab-grown facility uh, in an area where there is abundant renewable energy. Uh, with mined diamonds, you are much more constrained by where you situate the mine based on where the ore deposit is. Now, one of the main reasons that lab-grown diamonds gained a lot of popularity is because of a lot of the social and ethical concerns surrounding miners and some of these mining companies and the conditions um, uh, in the mining process. Um, would you say that lab-grown diamonds do much to address those concerns or perhaps offset some of them? Well, lab-grown diamonds clearly have uh, less of a land disturbance impact. You know, you don't have to um, uh, dig large holes in the ground to establish a lab-grown facility. However, on the social side, uh, the uh, response to the question would need to consider what kind of livelihood development opportunities are there for mined diamonds and how they are being governed. In general, mined diamonds provide far more in terms of employment and livelihoods currently than do lab-grown diamonds. And they are likely to do so because the uh, supply chain for mined diamonds is uh, far more complex. It involves many more businesses, so you have much more of what economists call a multiplier effect whereas with lab-grown diamonds, you have much uh, less need for employment. So if the uh, employment is well-governed, then mine diamonds actually have a much greater potential for development impact. That is why you have countries like Botswana, which have been able to uh, make major strides in development, primarily because they had mine diamonds available, and they were able to provide large revenue flows, which could be uh, channeled into social programs uh, because the country was fairly well governed. Uh, however, if you do not have good governance, uh, then you end up with a situation as we did um, during the civil war in Sierra Leone or Liberia, where uh, the diamonds were clearly linked to conflict. People are certainly familiar with some of these bigger diamonds companies. But what about the Diamond Development Initiative? What does that do to help some of these artisanal and these smaller mining companies? Yes, so the Diamond Development Initiative is a nonprofit which has uh, developed out of the Kimberley process that was set up to address the issue of conflict uh, linked diamonds. And uh, the, the uh, DDI, as it's called, has developed a particular standard for uh, artisanally mined diamonds to provide greater assurance to consumers and to governments that the artisanally dyed mine diamonds, which are much more difficult to govern uh, often, are still being produced responsibly. There is greater income that is being returned to the miners themselves. Uh, and so they developed a standard called the Mendeleo Diamond Standard, uh, where you can actually um, uh, have uh, uh, an audit mechanism to assure the level of environmental as well as uh, social uh, compliance with standards uh, set forth. And uh, that has been a very positive development within the last year, particularly as this standard has been launched. And you mentioned this issue of standards, and there's also this issue of labeling. We understand that currently gem fair diamonds are intermingled with other De Beers diamonds. Are there plans for consumers to get more clarity when it comes to labeling so that they can really understand these distinctions and really make a more informed choice? Well, you know, gem fair was a partnership between DDI and De Beers to uh, test the availability of artisanally mined diamonds through this uh, certification mechanism. So it is still early days as to uh, how much of the tracking is going to be um, possible to provide to a, a consumer. There are, however, uh, already mechanisms whereby diamonds are tracked by jewelers from source uh, all the way to the consumer. Uh, the same kind of mechanism certainly could be applied to artisanally mined diamonds as well. Uh, we also have now blockchain technology and other mechanisms to assure greater level of 
uh, continuity within the tracking mechanism. So I think we're moving into a very exciting period where the consumer will have more power in um, figuring out where their uh, merchandise is coming from. And as we look at some of the consumer trends, how do you see these two industries, the mined diamonds and the lab-grown diamonds, how do you see them either converging or perhaps competing with each other? If uh, consumers are particularly concerned about environmental issues, uh, land disturbance issues, uh, it's likely that they would gravitate more towards uh, lab-created stones. Uh, but uh, that does not mean necessarily that uh, the mined diamond should be stigmatized either, because mined diamonds are providing great livelihood. Some of the mining companies are trying to also establish conservation uh, zones uh, to offset some of their land disturbance. So I think both have a role to play in the consumer marketplace, and I would hope they find their appropriate niches.